You love your wife more than anything. And the thought of divorce is crushing you inside. You work your ass off for your family and are now scrounging for the answer to save your marriage. You want your wife to know that you've changed this time and love and intimacy is on its way. So in today's video, I'm going to reveal five principles to get your wife to notice your changes, let go of the past, stop divorce, and fall back in love with you again. Now, I've been a licensed therapist and marriage coach for the past decade, and I've helped thousands of men turn their marriages completely around from the brink of divorce. But before discovering the answer, I witnessed firsthand how traditional marriage counseling had actually only made things worse when I used to practice it. It wasn't talking about the problems that turned all of these marriages around, okay? It was because they followed these five principles I'm going to lay out to you today. Not only did it help these men win their wives back, but it shocked the living heck out of my fellow therapists who initially thought I was actually crazy when I told them what I was gonna do. But after seeing the results, they've been staying pretty quiet since then. Now, real quick, before we get into the five principles, I had a ton of men over the years ask me this one question. How do you get her to stop bringing up the past? So at the end of the video, I will link to you another video that addresses this very question. And this is something we cover extensively in our program, so I'll just put it out there that if you want one-on-one -on -one help in turning your marriage around and access to the invaluable resources to dramatically boost your chances of success, then click below to set up a free call with our marriage evaluators. But we only accept men who are fully committed to doing the work. It's why our success rate is so high. So please only do so if you're serious about winning her back. Now for this first one, I recently led one of the group calls in the program where I shared this idea with men, not just myself, but studies will show that when you take the perspective that you have full control over and ownership over your life, it leads to more happiness. It leads to more success, right? And as much as you cannot control her, what you have control over, right, is your perspective and what you do and how you respond. Now, this perfectly blends in with the idea of ownership, because at the end of the day, what do you really have control over? There are the actions and then the outcomes, that clear dichotomy. Now, most of men's failure to win their wife back and the suffering that comes along with it is rooted in the illusion of control. Come here, zoom in. Let me say this. You cannot control your wife. You can only influence her. And you must know this difference. I am putting this point first because it is where so many men struggle. You're focusing too much on the outcome, okay? Too much on what you can't control. You wanna know how I know how? In the conversations. You're trying to get somewhere with her, aren't you? There's this dependence of being somewhere else, denying what she's feeling, saying, I want her to be happy. I want us to be happy. But in doing that, you are going against what is true. Now, this juxtaposed with hundreds of testimonials I get on with guys, they focus on their own actions. They don't focus on their wife. You'll see the common thread among them. They're like, hey, these are my goals. This is what I'm doing. And when they become that man, then she comes back. Now, I love this quote that completely sums up this whole idea. You'll never catalog every drop of water in the sea arrest control from tempests. So don't be distracted by the endless mysteries and terrors of the abyss. Instead, focus on the simple, vital task of rowing your boat. What you have control over is your thoughts and your perceptions of everything. Once you embrace this idea, it allows you to adopt the one mindset that does bring her back. Now, there's this idea I talk about on this channel called the attraction paradox, okay? And when I say it, it's gonna seem obvious, but just stick with me because most men, they think they know it in here, but they don't know it down here. So it's the idea that of course you can want your wife and desire her, which is what she wants more than anything, but simultaneously you don't need her. And a good objective marker, by the way, if you want an immediate way to show this is that you make a move on her and you take her on a date. And then when she rejects you, you are completely unfazed by it. And if that wouldn't happen to you, then you don't fully grasp this idea just yet. So hear me out. This state of being, this attraction paradox, to, it's the best mindset to be in with her. It's not something that you do to achieve. It's more something that you remove out of the way. I'm going to imagine that the attraction paradox within you is this diamond that's in the center of your being. And right now, you don't have to put pressure on that coal to make it a diamond. What you have to do is just remove the dirt that got in the way. And for, I want to say 99% of men, but for majority of men that we work with, the dirt is this toxic shame that Dr. Glover talks about. It is this nice guy paradigm that a lot of guys fall into. If you haven't read the book, No Race for Nice Guy yet, well, I highly recommend it because you'll be saying, holy crap, that's me. But I did the podcast with Dr. Glover on this other channel that you guys can check out at the end of this video where we talk about this concept. Just like when nice guys come to me and say, all right, Robert, I realize being a nice guy doesn't work. Being passive, being pleasing, avoiding conflict is not getting me what I want, but I don't want to become the asshole jerk. 
Maybe I need, where, where's, I go, there's no middle ground. The, the, the nice guy is in fight, flight, freeze, and he's managing his anxiety with, with flight and freeze. The asshole's in fight, flight, freeze, but he's managing his anxiety with fight. He's, he's, so, so mm-hmm. this guy is manipulating through aggression. This guy's manipulating through, through passivity and passive aggressiveness and covert contracts. And you see, that's where it really comes from, is that every nice guy behavior that comes out, that dirt, is just a way to remove anxiety. There's this underlying fear that she's gonna leave you, all right? So you are people pleasing or you use covert contracts or you do all these things that Dr. Glover talks about as a way to like, hey, I'm okay, okay, stay with me, please. Like, don't leave me. It's this fear of the abandonment. And don't worry with this podcast, I did ask Dr. Glover, what is the best way in order for a man to overcome or remove that dirt out of the way to reveal the diamond? What is the best way to do that? So we have to go second order. And second order always, Part of it involves some raising of consciousness of where we become more conscious. It usually involves um, getting more differentiated, more, more self-defined. Uh, it involves learning to make your needs a priority. It learns to be being honest. It involves a, a lot of things, no matter what spectrum we're talking about. Now, the simplest way to think about this is that everything you do stems from how you see yourself, your identity. And your identity is shaped by the things that you do, the habits that you have. Now, James Clear talks about in his book, Atomic Habits, about the idea of becoming or starting to run. Now, the best way to start running is to adopt the identity that you are a runner, okay? Now, because you are this nice guy subconsciously, you are doing things to replicate that same feeling of not being good enough. So to override that system in you, that identity, is to do these massive things that will validate that you are a man that is worthy. So what are some of these things? It is going toward conflict. It is looking at your life saying, What am I afraid of, right? It is always leaning into your edge as a man, taking risks in life. This is what David Data talks about in his book, The Way of Superior Man. So recently I did a whole stand-up comedy routine. I did stand-up comedy class and a stand-up comedy routine, which by the way, I thought was uh, hilarious, of course. (laughs) But I was frightened and I was like, this is on my edge, right? And the beautiful thing about life is that once you achieve one thing, (laughs) your fear will tell you what you want next, what you have to do. So for me, what I've been hearing recently is doing a Shavasana retreat. I think it's what they, Vipassana retreat. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Basically, it's like a seven-day silent meditation retreat where you don't talk. You meditate for like 10 hours a day. Sounds brutal, but I think for me, that is the next thing. And when you do these things like take cold showers, work out consistently, push yourself, join a group of other men that are on the same journey as you, your brain has to reconcile that you are this guy. You are this confident man. So then everything you do, comes from that confident place and she feels it and she senses that there is no more Mr. Nice Guy. Now for this next one, it's an idea that I've been playing with. It's a new idea. And so just stick with me here because if you fully get the way I see this, it'll change everything. Okay. Now in the apex male that we talk about here, the authentic masculine man that is the most attractive, best version of who you are, you were elements of that guy, really close to him at times, especially when you met your wife. That's why she fell for you, okay? Now, there are five key components of this authentic male that I've identified. An apex man is conscious. He's in the present moment or not distracted. He has purpose and ambition or dominance in his domain of his life, whether that's dominance over himself, dominance in the work field, dominance everywhere. He is going up that ladder of success and he has the attributes of grit discipline and determination in every domain, not just work. He has an unreactive, cool manner with himself. And this is also equated to a man who has strong boundaries because he knows who he is and what he wants. When people poke against him, he's able to assert what he wants, but still remain unreactive emotionally. He's at the cause of his emotions, not the reaction of them. The fourth one is one that some people could debate here, but I would say that an authentic apex male is self-expressive and humorous. He sees the humorous nature of life and the unseriousness of it all. Yes, he can take things seriously, but at the end of the day, it's all kind of a joke and it's all fun, right? Life is about having fun and he knows that. And lastly, he is a man who makes decisions. He is that authentic leader. Now, the idea here is that subconsciously and even spiritually, right? A lot of women are not conscious of this, but every time you are going away from those five core pillars of this apex man, she feels disconnected from you. Okay, now when she feels disconnected, she just feels that internal disconnect. It's just like a feeling of like, I'm not here with, he's not here with me. He's not being the man that I know he can be. And then she gets irritable or annoyed or frustrated and it comes off in the form of criticism or a test. 
Now, the reason why a woman will test a man through criticism and challenge is because the masculine needs to respond through challenge, okay? The feminine grows through flourishing, through appraisal, through validation, right? We grow through challenge. And the biggest challenge in becoming the man you're supposed to be is your spouse, your partner. She will see parts of you where you fall short and she will call that out through her testing, through her dark moods. And that is an opportunity for you to look at yourself in the mirror and say, where am I falling short and how do I evolve or grow? Where most men will make the big mistake is that whenever she's being critical to you, because you have this already inherent wound as a part of yourself, shame or parts of yourself that you don't own up to, right? You've used defense mechanisms or intellectualism. You use defense mechanisms or intellectualism to really rationalize away these parts of you that are not perfect. And that comes off as being defensive. Her ego wants to be right all the time, but there's a part of her, uh, her higher self, if you will, even if she's not doing it through the most higher self means her criticism, there's some truth in there about you that you are not seeing. And if you choose to ignore or defend or label her as being uh, narcissistic or bipolar or depressed, or she's uh, responding with her trauma, you're missing out on the opportunity for growth, right? For that self-reflection. However, if you learn how to pass those tests, if you learn how to use self-inquiry and grow from those experiences, what will happen is that you will then create more love and deeper intimacy with her because of the man you are becoming. But overall, you need to recognize that these moments where she is attacking you or criticizing you, at the end of the day, they are opportunities for you to look at yourself and grow. Now, out of those five domains, I'm gonna give you the most practical one, which was the last one that you can start using today to see an immediate shift in her, which is decisional dynamics. Now, this can be seen as controversial. That's fine. I don't care because in your domain, I'm going to give you the best advice. And when it comes to heterosexual relationships, I don't care what your wife says, what she comes off as. She wants you to make the decisions and be the leader, period. I don't care if she's stubborn. I don't care if she's a boss babe at work because they call them. I don't know. I don't care if she's been a leader her whole entire life. I'm going to argue that is a defense mechanism that women put on the face she had to adopt in her early childhood because she couldn't trust others in her life. Now, yes, subconsciously, she's playing on the same pattern with you, but in her true essence, in her feminine nature, which you've seen at times, she wants to surrender. She wants to be submissive. She wants you to lead for her because it is a huge weight off of her shoulders down to the littlest decisions you will make for her about what to eat for dinner or what workout she should do, where to go on vacation, what to do for the kids right? What time should you guys go to bed tonight? All these things. And you're not making the decisions for her. You are helping her decide by giving your input. There's a big difference. And then from the micro all the way to the macro, where is your relationship headed? You are the keeper of the relationship. You are the protector of it. You have the thermometer on where things are going and you are going to fix the problem when there is the problem. But in order to do so, you must have a good diagnostic map of where you guys are going. Do you see? So you can tell when you're going off course. So many men, we want to skate through life. Oh, I'm with her. She's with me. We have a routine. We have our habits. Life is good. She's happy in those moments, isn't she? She wants more. She needs you to lead. She needs you to take her on adventure. She needs you to find just a conference somewhere, to go do something fun, to go on a random trip, to do these spontaneous things, to try a new restaurant out, to, to drive 30 minutes further away to a new store, something to add the leadership, add the spontaneity, make decisions and Adopt that as a part of who you are as a man. If you're not a leader in other domains of your life, begin. But if you are, like most of the men we work with in the job capacity, you already have those skills. There's just something holding you back from doing that with her. Look, if you can go back, right? And you can look at all the times you did lead with her. You did take charge. The whole day you planned something out and how the day just naturally went. You'll start to make that connection like, holy crap, if I do lead, we have a good time. It's just that your ego... It takes energy and consumes calories to make decisions, right? This is why CEOs get paid so much money, the best decision makers. So I get that your natural tendency is not want to do that, but you need to adopt that CEO mindset with your wife, okay? When a man is driven by his purpose, his wife can feel his dedication and his commitment. This focused energy makes him more attractive as she knows he is living with integrity and direction. I want to convey this last point to you, the self and spotlight with a man I recently spoke to. I met him at a fundraiser event in Austin, Texas, and very successful businessman, sold his company for a lot of money, don't even want to say how much. And um, 
he took an interest in what we were doing here. You know, he wanted to get on a call with me. This guy charges like $20,000 for a call. It's crazy. <laughs> but I thought, so I thought he wanted to sell me to his coaching, but he just wanted to talk to me and see what I was doing. On that call, it was not business at all. We were just talking about life. And he was telling me some of the things that he was doing with his coaching business and how he wanted to integrate AI into coaching. It was really cool stuff. But as he was speaking, I recognized, I, I told him, I said, you know, like, as you're speaking, I pictured this rocket just like heading towards space. And yes, there's these things that are trying to pull you down, these obstacles, but you have just this internal jet fuel that is just coming from love and source and God and all these things. And he's like, oh, that's really cool. <laughs> I, I really felt that and I meant it when I said it. Um, and that's what's admirable. You know, the time in my life when I really started to hear this idea about purpose and leadership, I was in college and I made my whole entire personality or like I, I was really focused on wanting to attract women and date women, right? And I was very needy, especially at first. And then I got to this point where I really wanted to focus more on my career, my purpose, what I was doing here. And then it was like a light switch turned on, but in parties and situations where I was like in circles talking to people and I felt like, oh, they, do they like me? Do they want to talk to me? And then they would eventually leave and I was sitting there all by myself, surrounded by hundreds of people. As soon as I started focusing on something outside of myself, uh, a grander cause to achieve. I had things to talk about in parts. I was so passionate. I didn't care what other people thought, right? I was just hyper-focused on this goal. And we can tell when we meet someone with that ambition, it is so attractive because we want that in ourself. She wants that, right? She wants to get on that rocket ship with you. She wants to go on a journey. And unfortunately, over the years, you put so much of yourself into her, you've lost that truth, that what really drives her back toward you again, that makes her feel safe is you going towards that direction, what you want in your life. The question of what you want and who you are, I'll never answer it, right? You'll never answer it, but it is a, it is a constant dialogue with ourself that we must understand and strive toward as an ideal. And so you must pause and say, what do you want in your life? I don't care how old you are. You are wanting something every single day until the day you die, right? You are striving towards something greater, whether it's just contributing towards fundraisers are building a business or even as a father, you are focusing on something outside of yourself and that is what drives her toward you. Let me end with this quote from uh, Stephen Covey who wrote the book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. If you haven't read it, it's like the Bible and self-development. Living a life centered on deeply held principles and values brings a man stability and strength. When he is unwavering in his purpose, his wife is drawn to his consistency and leadership, deepening their connection and respect for each other. Thanks for watching. If you need support, you know how to get it by clicking the link down below.